Ignite 2.0, the podcast by young adults for young adults. I'm Julian. I'm Tamia. I'm Josiah. And, and we're, we're the hosts. hosts. This topic is so special to us because it's something that people either strive in or suffer in. Today, we are focusing on young adults and mental health. It's such an important topic that we all deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's just important to make sure your mental is right. Well, for sure. I, I, I agree with you because, like, um, some people deal with anxiety, like anxiety attacks when they wake up in the morning. They Sometimes you wake up and you have a lot of stuff to do, like me. I deal with that sometimes. I have a lot of stuff to do in a day. Right. And I have an anxiety attack, but I have to, like, control that, control that. So Because if, if I don't control it, my day is going to be bad. Like, right. It's going to be yeah. bad. I'm not going to miss stuff. All that, like, I don't know if you guys... No, I, I deal with a lot of panic attacks, and that's something that I'm overcoming. But, like, it's crazy because it's always around, like, final exam time, like, at yeah. school or whatever, or, like, if something's really bothering me, I could go into one, and it's really hard to navigate it because it's, like, all the thoughts are just coming at one time and, like, controlling it and really, like, saying, hey, like, you got this, you can do this. It's, it's a hard thing to overcome, so... No, oh, for yeah. sure, for sure. Most definitely. Um, the biggest thing that I deal with is, like, thinking about my lost loved ones or the people that I've lost. Um, that really puts me into, I don't want to say a state of depression, but I do get, like, a little sad, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. because I wish they were here. Um, I wish they were here to see the things that they've instilled in me grow, you know, and it's like, Sometimes you wake up like, dang, it hurts that they can't see that. Um, so that's what, what, what mental what mental health. That's my biggest thing for yeah, sure. No, I, I understand what you're saying. I don't even know how to deal with that. Like when people mm -hmm. possibly, I don't even know how I deal with this still. Like to this day, I don't. I just, I just, I, don't know, I go to like a different. I'm a different person. Feel like sometimes, like right. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's like a numbness. Yeah, it's like, like I, I don't know. Sometimes I ask myself like. Do I care? Like, exactly. I know I care. Like, I know am I, I care. tripping? Yeah. Because like, like, you don't know what's wrong with me. Do. Like, yeah, like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, that's that's one thing that's really hard for me. Like, just because for me, the past two months, I can't count on one hand how many people have died. And I'm just like, what the heck? Like, what is going on? And then something my dad always tells me, even though things happen, even though you have to mourn, you still got to get out of your room and go to class. You still got to show your face. You still got to smile. You still got to do all that stuff. And, like, that's the hard part because it feels like you have to keep pushing in life while you're, like, spiritually bleeding. You really just got to keep walking, like, keep moving. Yeah. Yeah, that's Very why. numb. No, yeah. I, spiritually bleeding, that's that's it right there. Literally. <laughs> like, way to describe Spiritually it. bleeding. Yeah, especially, like, saying, like, you have to keep going. Like, um, somebody passed. I'm not going to say his name, but somebody passed, like, a couple of weeks ago. And during that week, I was in class. Like, it was it was my eighth week, and, I, like, every eight weeks we have um, finals. Mm. So I'm not doing no work. Right. I didn't go to class. First timing ever. Like, everything's due on a certain day. I'm, I, I had to email my counselor, like, man, I don't even know. I've just been in a, a phase. Like, I don't even know. Somebody passed away very close to me. Like, even now, I'm getting a little choked up talking yeah. about, like, I understand Crazy what you mean. Stuff. Like the sun still rises, and then and it still and it's still, still gotta go. Still, yeah, still gotta keep going. Really nice. Whatever. Yeah. Nothing still changes. Still gotta get to it. Exactly. And half the time, the professors, the professors don't, especially in pre med. Oh my gosh! Like, unless you are, that. this sounds so vulgar, but unless you are on your deathbed, don't come with no excuses. Like somebody could pass away, you could be dang near about to flip, and they're like, "But I still need you to take this exam. It's two hundred points. You don't come in, you losing that point." And it's just like, it's so tough to go through things because same thing happened to me. I found out somebody really close pass, passed away and I was walking out of a class, one of the hardest classes I'm taking at the moment. And I'm walking down the stairs and I see somebody posting and I'm like, yeah, no. Mm -mm. And it's just like, at the end of the day, I still got to go to class. I still got to, it's crazy. It's crazy because it, it practically makes you numb when yeah. you have to put yourself in environments where it's like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I still, like I said, I'm not explaining it. I just feel weird. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just feel Facts. weird. Like, all right, uh, but we we have a very special guest that can help us with some of these, these issues of mental health that we're having. Yeah. So let's get right to it. 
we're going to bring out someone that we all know and respect when we come back. Um, we have a special, a very, very special guest that can help us out with some of these issues that we have. Um, so am I, am I introducing it? Is <laughs> 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 all right. Okay, but we have a very special guest with some, some of the, okay, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Ignite 2.0 airs weekly on the EIFM YouTube channel. So join us for a live chat during the broadcast. All right, so we're back, and it is our honor to have Dr. Frederick K. Price as our special guest. Good to see y'all. Good, Good to see, see you. Too. All right, so what are we going to talk about? Man. Mental health. Mental we've, been, health. <laughs> we've been sitting here having some real deep conversation just about how we've all struggled with anxiety and we honestly just want to get your point of view, point of view. We know that you're the pastor of this church and we just we we look up to you, but not only that, we know that you've probably been through far more than we have and you may know how to cope with things a little differently. And we've just been talking about how sometimes things could feel a little numb. So, how are some ways that you've dealt with anxiety and like things that you've overcome with? So, first off, I've probably only gone through more than you all because I've just been here longer. Um, but it's possible you all have been through more at the ages that you're at, as opposed to when I was coming up, reaching the same milestone ages that you've reached. In addition to that, let me say, this ministry has, has been what's known as a, as a word of faith ministry and word of faith churches and ministries have somewhat frowned upon the idea of people needing mm. help for their mental. You know, we're supposed to take the word, we're supposed to confess. Mm. We're supposed to be like, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. We're supposed yeah. to be on it. <laughs> right. right. Especially if you're a man. Absolutely. Especially if you're a man. Exactly. And so what we have failed at is we haven't applied the same spiritual logic to our minds as we have to our bodies because Faith folk don't have a problem going to the to the doctor to get checkups, mm -hmm. to the internist, to the hospital for surgeries or anything like that. Right? We believe God for our healing. But right. if something happens and we gotta go see an expert, we do that. Right. How come with the mind or with our mentality and our mental health is frowned upon? You know, because we're supposed to have the mind of Christ. Right. And all of that is true. But the Bible says we have this treasure in earth and vessels. So when we got born again, our spirits are perfect, but the rest of us is still being perfected. And it's going to take some time. There's a maturation process. Mm -hmm. So for me, again, up to a certain point, I would, I would have never thought that I would ever sit down with a counselor or sit down with a therapist. Right. Matter of fact, I would have told you my mental health is fine. Take it a step further. I would have said I'll never right. suffer from anxiety. I will never be that guy I'm that suffers <laughs> from depression. Man. However, I've experienced it all. And I realized, and it probably hit maybe like almost seven years ago where I was like, I, I need some help. I need to take it a step further. I need something that I can apply the word to. And I sought out a therapist and we did a, a, a phone consultation and he said, yeah, you, you qualify for some therapy. So that's when my journey began. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I'd have been the first one to tell you, I'll never be depressed. Yet I was noticing symptoms of depression. I would tell you, I'll never be anxious about anything. Yet there were symptoms of anxiety. So you're saying one thing, but you're displaying symptoms in, right. in your body, in your in your in your speech, mm -hmm. in your behavior, in your mannerisms. Why am I struggling to go to sleep? Mm. Mm. Why am I um, getting angry so so quickly? Uh, Why am oh I sure, more yeah. emotional yeah. than normal? Yeah. Like, what is all of this? So again, I'm saying I'm not depressed. I'm saying I'll never be depressed, but I'm showing all of these symptoms of depression. So in actuality, I was in denial. And one of the most dangerous aspects of the journey of faith is assuming that your denial is your faith, mm. is assuming that, oh, no, I'm believing God. So, no, I don't right. have that or I'm not dealing with that. No, yeah, you are. Yeah. And you need to address it. So let me tell you all some of the things that I found out 
when I went to therapy, things that I was dealing with. Um, frequent, frequent bouts of depression. Why? Well, for one, I grew up in this ministry with everybody having their eyes on me and telling me what I was going to do when I got older. You're the next pastor. You know that, right? Sorry. Right. Yeah. Right. Sorry. It's already right. sad. I watched you grow up. This is why you were born. Man. You guys can think Ooh, of a number man. of things people probably said to me as I was growing up. And of course, I was like, yeah, whatever. All That's right. what y'all say. And then one day I acknowledged the call because I genuinely had a call. Mm -hmm. I didn't know exactly what it was going to look like. And even when I acknowledged it and I told my dad, I was still running from it. Mm -hmm. Because while I had to admit that, yes, the Lord is calling me, I didn't want to do it. For me, being a part of this ministry, like the kind of ministry that this church is and there are similar ministries like this all over the country all over the world the word of faith ministries you know we're the we're the you have what you say ministries the death and life are in the power of the tongue ministries mm -hmm. so ministries like this would somewhat frown upon a christian saying i need therapy mm. like why would you need therapy when you're the head and not the tail why would you need therapy when you don't have the spirit of fear right right why would you need therapy when you should be focused on seeking first the kingdom of God and mm -hmm. et cetera? Well, again, and I've said this before, I've said this during teachings. Why have we this entire time been OK with going to a doctor? We have no problem going to see that expert. We have no problem having a surgery or right. having a procedure for something that may be wrong with our physical body. And we'll we'll get the saints together and we'll get an agreement and we'll pray and we'll still speak the word over the situation, mm -hmm. yet take medicine, right. yet have the <clears throat> procedure, et cetera. Why have we not applied that same spiritual logic to our minds? Mm -hmm. In other words, if I can go see a doctor for my, for my physical body, why can't I go see a doctor for my mental, right. for my mind? Like it shouldn't be frowned upon. If anything, it should be embraced in the church and with so many scriptures on the mind, you know, uh, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind or set your mind on things above, et cetera. The, the scriptures are filled with, with, with verses that have a focus on the pro progression or the health of the mind. So why would it be frowned upon? But that's the world. And not just even in word of faith circles, but in church circles as a whole, it just hasn't been, uh, the church hasn't been very inviting mm -hmm. for the therapist or for the for the counselor for something regarding your mental. I probably first noticed it about seven years ago. And I will be the first one to tell you, I'll never admit to depression. I'll never admit to a panic attack or or an anxiety attack. No way. That would never be me. But as I am progressing through ministry and my calling, especially when I became the pastor of the church, 2009, 30 years old, becoming the pastor of the great Crenshaw Christian Center, right. following in the right. footsteps of the great apostle, Dr. Frederick Casey Price. Right. Because to everybody else, you should be straight. Like, you should be good. I, I should be. Right. right. Right? Let's think about the household I came out of. Right. Let's think about the school that I went to. Right. right. Y'all might know about that school. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's think about, um, you know, just everything that I've been, been saturated with and immersed in. Like, I should be good. And, of course, one of the first things that everyone wanted me to do was be exactly like my father. The majority did. Now, my father never said I had to be like him. Mm -hmm. And he relinquished the pastor. He was like, you're the pastor now. So what's your vision from God? But everyone else is expecting me mm -hmm. to continue to do everything else that right. he's doing. Mm -hmm. So I'm dealing with these frustrations. I'm thinking ministry is going to be great. It's going to be a smooth ride. And I'm dealing with, with annoyances and irritants. I'm feeling like I'm not producing. I'm feeling like I'm not contributing. And I believe this began to have a toll, take a toll on me. And so eventually, like I said, around around 2017, I'm like, I, I need I need extra help. I, I need to take this a step further and I need to go. I need to sit down with someone who who focuses, whose expertise is the mind. Right. right, right. And so I chose therapy. And I remember having the consultation with my therapist. It was quick and like five minutes. He was like, yeah, yeah you need to come in. And so I realized I've, I, I have dealt with depression, would have never owned it, yet I had symptoms, mm -hmm. symptoms of depression, symptoms like what? Loss of appetite, 
or increased appetite mm -hmm. or I can't get to sleep, insomnia, um, mm. anger, bur Man. burst of anger Man. and, and e e being out of control emotionally. Mm -hmm. uh, I found out from my therapist one of the things that, that I, and I don't want to take ownership of any of it. Like, I, have you guys ever heard this, and it sounds really good, but have you ever heard this before, especially when it comes to mental health? It's okay to not be okay. Have yeah. you ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get that, though. So, so here's how I would word it. I would say it's okay to recognize you're not okay. Right. right. It's not okay to, to, to not be okay, right. but it is okay to recognize, well, I'm dealing with something. Right. Mm. Like, I'm not okay right now. Right. Right. But I want to go from not being okay to, to being okay. okay. To That's being hard. okay. Yeah. It's hard to do in the moment. Absolutely. I feel like, I feel like it's hard. Yeah. I, like you said, you said you're, um, you might have been going through some depression. I feel like I did that in college when I first left, but I'm only realizing that now. Like, I didn't know. I was, and then I'm thinking, like, dang, some of the things I was doing, like, right. you were tripping. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like, what's going on? And that's how you would know. You go back and you look at what was I doing? Right. How was I? reacting what was i suffering through and right. that'll help you identify what you probably were dealing with mm -hmm. way back mm -hmm. then they say hindsight is 2020 when you look back it's crystal clear it's foresight that's a bit cloudy right. and it might even be a little cloudy in the present moment right. you, you may not be able to actually pinpoint what's going on right but sometimes our pride gets in the way and there'll mm. just be a number of things that we're not going to admit to right like, I'm not going to say. Sure. Like, no, I'm yeah. good. Yeah. Like, I'm good. <laughs> right. I'm not going to lie. I just did that. Uh, I, I was sitting here. I said, I don't want to say I was depressed, but I was sad. <laughs> like, like, nah, I was in denial. Like, yeah. Nah, I was depressed. Right. You feel right. Me? So I, and that, I, I feel that. Yeah, and that ownership is the first step in getting help mm -hmm. and, getting, and getting healing. So my therapist was able to, to recognize that, one of the things that I was contending with now in the secular world, they'll say, this is what you are. This is what you have. Right. I'm like, okay, I hear you. You're the expert. But because I am a, a person of the word, I'm going to take what you say. And when I bring it to God, I'm not going to bring it to God as if I'm owning this or as if right. this is who I am. Right. I understand the attack that the devil is sending my way. I understand the attack that I'm going through. So this is what I'm contending with. This is what I am going to, I mean, from God's perspective, I've already overcome it. Mm -hmm. We just got to see it play out, right, right. in a natural realm. Yeah. But one right. of the things was, was it's, it's called ICD, impulse compulsion disorder. Mm -hmm. Even as pastor of the church, I still, I still got to arrest this one. And one of the ways it, it manifests, like this is going to sound silly, but let me give you an example of how it can pop up. And this is, a, this is ultimately, this is a mental health issue. Y'all familiar with like DoorDash and Uber Eats and mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Grubhub? <laughs> yeah. Now, you and I both know that the whole purpose of these food delivery services is for convenience. Right. Right. right? We're removing me having to leave my house, get in the car, and right. wait in the line. Right. right. So it's supposed to be a perk. Well, if I put my order in and you bring it to me wrong, what kind of inconvenience does this now become? Right. Mm -hmm. It's more of an inconvenience than if they got the order right while I was at the restaurant, because at right. least I'm at the restaurant. All right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So this happened a lot like during the pandemic and I would just go nuclear. Mm. It's almost like in that moment, my 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 judgment left. Mm. Like for that brief moment, I was void of judgment and I just reacted. I didn't think anything through. And so if I might have yelled. I mean, I've taken food and I've stomped food out in my kitchen <laughs> because it was the wrong oh order. Oh, my gosh, right? yeah. And that can manifest, right? Yeah. In other words, so it's like oh, your impulse. Understand. It's like you're not, you're not corralling your impulses like you should. And right. just in that moment, so, like, somebody could cut you off and you could just go off. It's over, yeah. Yeah. Man, for I, sure. To this day, when I'm driving, it's, I don't know, like, people try to help me. I'll be on the phone. And they're like, who are you talking to? I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> it's just snapping. Like, I know they can't hear me, but. Right. It's like you said, that impulse, it's just like, mm -hmm. you click, like, I just yeah. click to a different person, like, I'm tripping now. Like, and, and, and some people have those kinds of of issues that they're working through. Sure. So yeah. that was just one example of the things that I was able to have identified going through these sessions. And I realized, well, I don't know if I ever would have identified that. I don't mm -hmm. think I would have identified that on my own. Just like, I can't say what's wrong with my 
body. I'm in pain. I don't know what this is. So I need to go see someone exactly. who has right. a familiarity with the human body so they could tell me what this challenge is. Right. And so it's the same. It's the same with the mind. So I've been an advocate for mental health for sure for the past like almost seven years. Like I'm, I'm all for it. I, I encourage anyone, especially young people, especially young people, you all's age, like you want to arrest these things now, you know, if you can, if you're capable of arresting it now yeah. and grabbing a hold of it now yeah. and getting the victory over it now, right. you're going you're gonna to go much further mm -hmm. than, than I could ever go. Right. Yeah. Do you, um, I meditate now. I've just started doing that like the past couple of weeks, honestly. Mm -hmm. And I feel better. Like, it makes me feel better. It feels like I can get through it. Because I, I do a lot every day. Like, I'm getting out doing a lot. I'm still an athlete. So I'm doing, and I'm trying to make money. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know. But do you, I'm asking, like, do you meditate? Does it does it help you? Because it help, it's helping me right now. But I just yeah. want to know if you've done it for a longer so I can so, see. Like. So, so, for, so for Christians, you know, meditating is, is a little more specific than it is for the world. Okay. All right. So like for the world there to, you know, be still, be quiet and open up the mind. We have to be a little more strategic because we don't want to just open up the mind to anything. Right. All right. All right. So for us, it's OK. We meditate on the word. All right. We meditate on the promises of God. We meditate mm -hmm. on what we know about God. Right. Mm -hmm. But then after you meditate, right, you contemplate, you, you focus intently on it. Then you got to open your mouth and say something. Right. So whatever you're meditating on, that's got to come out of your mouth. That's true mm -hmm. biblical meditation is to mutter something, not to just contemplate or focus on something, but also to mutter. So if I'm focusing on the goodness of God, then I need to articulate and say how good God is. Mm -hmm. But that's that's really what meditation is for us as, mm -hmm. as Christians. I just learned something for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I do do it. Okay. I do do it. But I don't just get quiet and open, open up my mind to anything right. because okay. that can be... You know, that could be dangerous, yeah, dangerous, dangerous yeah. territory. Okay, for sure. Yeah. Um, one thing that I do with, um, there will be times where I might slack off, like reading my Bible or talking to God, spending time with God, coming to church. And like my my brother, he was, we was talking about this. He said like, why would I, why would I pray to God and, and ask him for something when I haven't been talking to him. Or uh, I was talking to my mom about this right here, this this vodcast right here. I was like, I don't know, I don't know if, I, if I'm even worthy enough to, to get on here and talk. L l let me give you scripture for that. Uh, Paul said, I do not count myself to have apprehended, which means I'm not going to sit here and tell you I've arrived. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I got it all together. We talking about Paul. Like we all read his words. Right. Right. Holy Spirit inspired him to write most of the New Testament uh, uh, letters. Mm -hmm. And here we are. We're the ones teaching them and reading them and quoting them and sharing them with other people. Right. And he said, I can't tell you all that I've got it all together. But one thing I do know, forgetting those things which are behind me. Right. And pressing towards the mark, the upward calling, the, 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 the high prize and calling in God. I'm, that's what I'm aiming for. So you don't ever want to allow thoughts of unworthiness. First of all, you're worthy. <clears throat> you, you save, so you're worthy. Right. You know, you're the righteousness of God, so you're worthy. I get feeling like I'm not giving God my all. I should be doing more. I should be giving him more. I get that feeling. And I would say that's good that you're aware of it. That's good that you noticed it. Which means you realize I can improve. I can do better. Basically, you're not acting as if you've arrived. Right. You're not acting like you got it all together. I think that's one of the problems with church folk. Man. Right? Don't we don't we don't we come to church? Just act like everything is no and it's not. It's, uh, and that's one thing that I it's it's rough because for me, I feel like just even wise counsel that I talk to who know like that I'm called or whatever because like just like you said so many people have told me that and I'm just like okay I get it like I understand but it's like they all know that my aim is to always please God whatever he tell me to do I do it you want me to talk to somebody tell them Jesus loves them I got you you want me to do this send this to this person I got you bet but then it's like 
sometimes I feel like, okay, maybe I should be where this person is, or maybe I should be doing what this person is doing. And it's just like that feeling of unworthiness. I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest. I know this is probably like cussing in a church, but for me, there have been times where I'm like, God, I don't know why you chose me to do this because you got so many people out there who are so much better, or I could take it a step further. God, I don't want this. I don't want the call. Like, please take it. I don't want that. And it's like, just feeling like, okay, you are worthy. Like it, it got to a point where I felt like God really wanted me to write like a blueprint of like, who are you to me in Christ? You're worthy. You're God's righteousness, your royal priesthood. You are worthy of this. God is pleased by you because man, being in this world, there's, there's always, everybody's at different levels. And for me, it's just been, it's been a journey knowing that I actually please God. Like for real. You said that's your aim. Yes. To please God. Yes. Is that your aim? Yes. Is that your aim? That's your aim. To that's my aim. To glorify him too. Absolutely. Man. Absolutely. In other words, you you have set your mind and your heart to do those things. Mm -hmm. Now, because we have this flesh we live in, we may not hit the target every time, but it's our aim. Our aim mm -hmm. is to please God in every way, shape, form, and fashion. Right. And that's where you start. And you can't beat yourself up over, no, let me say it like this. We can't beat ourselves up over what we didn't accomplish or didn't finish mm -hmm. in, within a specific day right. or who we didn't reach or who we didn't talk to. Listen, again, I contend with things. And I'm going to tell you right now, I have had numerous thoughts this year, 2024, thoughts of guy you sure you want me pastoring here <laughs> Crenshaw you, was that the right one like Man. are you sure this is what um Ooh, did I hear geez. you right maybe I made a mistake however many years ago that was back in back in 97 maybe I didn't hear you right like I will I will I, I don't want to I don't want to call it self-doubt like I'm I'm mm. you know like doubting as opposed to being in faith, mm -hmm. but just wondering, like, did, did, did I miss you? Right. Did I miss? The, I know I'm called, but did I miss the calling? Right. Did I miss the specifics of the calling? Right. I have definitely something. Like, Man. Ooh. Like, something I go through, like, <clears throat> it, it happens every now and then. Like, I, I'm usually have my head on, on target. Like, I'm focused. But sometimes I get to the, like, I get down and I'm like, like, God, like, am I doing the right thing? And, or it's Man. like, Man, I'm I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing everything. You told me this. I'm supposed to do this. Like, I'm doing I'm doing it. I don't have times where I didn't cry. Like, cried out to like literally tear, cry out like talking to God. Like, like man, I'm doing it. I don't see nothing. Like, yeah, what's going on? Like, man, yeah, you know, I'm a Christian, right? Where like I'm getting a little shaken up, but like where I'm I'm like where's like where's the help? Like I'm a Christian. We're all Christians out here. Where's the help? Mm -hmm. Man, like that's your humanity. Mm. I mean, that's 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 not abnormal to have feelings like that um we have to remember that the devil's always coming at us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and he runs the system of the world so and and we we are a part of the kingdom of god but existing in this world system that he operates mm -hmm. that he has control over so so there are always unseen forces working against us mm -hmm. always yeah. and there are there are always um, um reasons as to why we may not see results in whatever or like as soon as we would like to see them right. or we feel like this should have already happened by now like right. i should have already been like, I, I was saying that to myself yesterday like there's certain things i know he's called me to do and some some of them i haven't even started yet and i'm like asking myself what fred was taking you so long like what are you doing you know are you are you afraid well no it's not fear do you do you need to do better with time management you know maybe that's it Right. But questioning, like, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself all the time. I'm, 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 again, not doubting myself, but I'm, I'm asking myself questions, right? right. And I'm not doubting God, but I'm asking God questions because I just want to make sure, like, I'm in right. your, I'm right. in your like, perfect will, good? right? Yeah. yeah, I'm in, I'm in the lane you have me in, because again, part of pleasing God is fulfilling a purpose, mm -hmm. right. and and we all want to make sure that we are in, we are in. So all of that is a part of 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 the 
attacks on the mind. The, the enemy is constantly, I mean, my dad did a, a, a series a long time ago called Battle of the Mind. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. Like the, these are the, these are the ways, the, the devices of the adversary, because he can't make us do anything. And he also can't put on us whatever he wants. So we got to give him place or we have to have an open door, right? Or we have to give the appearance of evil, et cetera. In other words, there's something that we have to do on our part for the adversary to have a foothold in our life. Right. And yeah. it begins mm -hmm. with his thoughts, ideas, and suggestions that don't line up with the word of God. So they come and we can't stop them from coming. So like, right. think about that for a second. We're talking about mental health. You can't stop the devil's lies from coming to your mind. This is where we are in, in the driver's seat. When they do come to our mind, what do we do with them? Right. Mm. And I take them a lot of the time. And that's the hard part, because it's like, I've even watched like part of your dad's series. And it's crazy because I don't know what to do. Like, I can discern, like, to me, you know, dang, well, this is not from God. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes... I think of it as like imagining the enemy throwing something at me and what he's throwing at me is whatever thought, idea or suggestion he has. And it's like up to me, like, OK, he going to throw it no matter what. He going to continue to throw it. But am I going to catch it? And am I going to put it in my mind? Because the minute I put it in my mind is growing. And now I feel like I've gotten to a point with like I wouldn't even say fear, but a little bit of fear, a little bit of doubt, a little bit of different things. And it just seems like it's grown into such a huge tree. It, it just seems like the roots are so deep. And it's like, it's, it's a, it's a every day, like you got to put on the armor because if you don't like, you're not going to make it. It's because I've, I've allowed it. Like I've allowed the sure. thoughts to come in and he's, he's kicked it up a notch. I'm, I'm not trying to give no credit to the devil at all but he's kicked it up a notch because I let him do it. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like I let him give me every single thought and I've allowed it to plant something in my mind that now I'm paying the consequences of like, you got to get, you got to uproot it and you got to replace it with what God says. And that's not, that is not the easiest thing. Yeah. The, the word is, I mean, we've all been rooted in the word. And right. so the devil's coming for the word that's in us. Right. And he wants to replace those roots with his roots of <laughs> everything that's the opposite. So whatever God is saying, the devil is saying the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. right. And we know there's no truth in him. So I mean, you even have to ask yourself, why would I even entertain him? And I know he's a liar. Right. So that's, that's, that's a part of disciplining your body, crucifying your flesh, renewing your mind. These are mm -hmm. things that we have to do all the time. That's why my dad would always repeat stuff. Because just because you heard it before doesn't mean you have it. Yeah, you got to be reminded. Mm, my mom said that the other day. Yeah. Said, yeah. You got to be reminded. And when you're reminded, that means it's something you heard before. Right. Or something you know. Right. And so the Bible says, I will stir you up by reminding you. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we have to, we have to keep ourselves in, <laughs> in the know of what we know. Right. That's amazing. You just that, said that. Yeah. Uh, uh, so pastor, I'm 22 years old. When you were 22, what specifically can you remember? Like, it might not be nothing to you now, but like at the time, like, ah, this is a big deal. Or I was dealing with this back then. Um, 22? I can remember. Oh, around that, around that yeah, age. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I remember 22. <laughs> <laughs> we talking 2001. I, I just, a year before, I taught my first message. It wasn't in the dome. That wasn't until Father's Day of 2002. Mm. But we used to have this, this thing called Time of Sharing. Uh, this is before all of you guys were born. Yeah. Man. Wow. I'm dating myself. <laughs> um, and it was for a few minutes after service on Sundays. And I shared for the first time. And that kind of opened the door for this somewhat focused calling on youth ministry. My dad was like, okay, so we're getting the ball rolling now. So you're going to have a focus on youth ministry. And it made sense. So in 2001, I was pretty active in, in youth ministry. Now, now, uh, Elder Jenkins is our is our teen minister right now. He has a calling. He has a calling to teen. I did not have a calling to teen. I was called to the ministry, mm -hmm. and this was something that I could do for the time being because I was relatable. I was young, so it made sense to start there. But I was wondering, like, what's next? You know, how do I make a way 
into whatever is next because I knew what the end game was as far as, as ministry, where I eventually would end up being in ministry here at Crenshaw. So around 22, I, I, I was focused on that. And then also I had asked, I had asked Angel to marry me. And yeah. Yeah, 20. Wow. No, 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 no. I asked, I asked her at the end of the year 2000. So I was 21. So, so three months before I turned 22, I though. I can't even wow. imagine. Yeah. I'm 22 imagine years old, and right no, yeah, I can't. That's, that's, There's that's no young. way. So like, it, like a really taking, crazy. really taking getting married seriously. That was that was age 22. Wow. Because I got married two weeks after I turned 23. So 22, mm. 22 Ooh, is so I'm dealing with youth ministry. I'm living at home with my. Watch this. I'm living at home with my parents. I cannot afford a wife. I can't. That's my reality. Right. And my dad's looking at me like, you you haven't shown me any kind of real, <laughs> real signs of responsibility. Yeah. But again, like this is what I'm this is this is what's weighing on my mind. How am I gonna take care of a wife? Where am I gonna live? I can't I can't live at home with my with my parents, or if I do, my dad's gonna give me like a window of time. Like, right. okay, you can stay here for this long. This is how you contribute, and you're right. gonna have to be out of here by this date. Right. right. So th those are the things that I was that I was dealing with. I wasn't dealing with school because uh, I had made up in my mind that wasn't the path for me. Yeah. Uh, I, I can agree to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's not, we should all remain students in life, right. learning, right. teachable, but not everyone has that collegiate grace. I don't it, think it helps. I feel like it only helps. With, okay. I know this is off topic. <laughs> no, <laughs> no but, it, but, it. But, it, but it applies. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it, school helps. I feel like if you're doing like what you're doing, like trying to be a doctor, yes. Okay, now I'm balancing two things. Like if you're trying to be a business, like yeah. an entrepreneur, I don't feel like you gotta go to college. It's like a waste of time. I feel like college is and it messes with your mental health too. Yeah, it, it does. Big time. I didn't it, notice I had problems with mental health until I got to college. I said, something's wrong with me. Exactly. And I don't know what it is, but I'm getting, just like you said, like the getting angry, I'm like, to me, it ain't even that big of a deal. <laughs> and you're mad, like you're pressed about what? Right. So it's, yeah. It, right. Schoolwork. So oh, imagine what, what the two of you were talking about. If you're not even 100% feeling like I should be in school, but you are in school, that's going to have, that's going to weigh heavy on your mental. Yeah. That's going to weigh oh, heavy on your mind. Mean, <laughs> you that's see, you, 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 you're wrestling with it. Like, why am I, why, why am I, I here? why am right. I here? I could be taking this time and, and using it. Something productive. Something, else, yeah. something that really feels productive, right? Man. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's a fact. So think of, so, so <laughs> this is how it's also a mental health issue. Like when we take the, wants of the previous generations and we carry them ourselves right or we carry their wants we carry their desires mm -hmm. a lot of parents a lot of guardians mm -hmm. want to see their children do what they never did or what Man. they always wanted to do but that may not be i say this all the time there better not ever be because i am i am carefully watching over my kids mental health right now mm -hmm. yeah there better not be a single person on these grounds that ever come up to my kids telling me what adults were telling me when I was their age right. about the ministry. You don't be a pastor. Right. No. Like, don't put that on. Don't have to. Right. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. And it's, don't. and it's not automatic. It doesn't mean it's going to happen just because right. I have children. It does not mean that the next pastor is going to be one of them. It might be one of them. Right, all right. But it's let not. Let God tell them that. Let like, God tell them. Let it's God not automatic. That. They had it on purpose. Right. Just because they're my children. Right. So. Again, I don't want people filling their minds, and then next thing you know, they're all, they, they can't, why, how come you can't sleep? You know, like, Freddie, how come you can't sleep? Oh, because this person today at church told me that one day I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to do what you're doing. Right. That hasn't happened, but I'm just saying, like, imagine right, right. people it's telling them things yeah, like that, right. and, and now it's a fake, that's a lot. Being young, too, like, whoa, yeah. man, hold on. And you <laughs> saying that, man, it's really, it's really hitting me, because for me, when I was in high school, like, Everybody would tell me that I was called, I was different, called to special <laughs> thing. Yeah, they know. Call me Pastor Gaston. <laughs> and I'm just like, I, I have that name to this day. And I obviously, I knew I was different. The fact, how I got here, like, my parents was told I was supposed to have Down syndrome. They didn't have me until five years after they tried, like, a lot. Obviously, like, there's something there. And God has revealed it to me. I told him no, but he, I'm here anyway. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's just like, I feel like it was a lot of pressure 
that when I got to college, and I'm in Arizona, so I, I have the freedom to now have my own mind. And I'm away from, like, family and my parents and just everybody, like, telling me, like, what I've made, like, should do or what I could do. And it's just like, okay, now it's me and you, God. Like, what is going on? Because now I'm just, like, I feel like when people put that type of weight and stress on you, it, it makes me want to run. Like, sure. I want to run away from God. Yeah. And God is like, nah, you just come sit and talk to me. Like, let because when God tells you things, I feel like it comes with a lot more peace. Instead of everybody just wanting you to live like, you know, like your parents want to live vicariously through you. And it's just like, I'm my own person. Like, you know what I mean? God's going to tell you. Right. What people should be doing is confirming what God's told you. Right. Not trying to lead you with right. whatever it is they're coming up with. Yeah. So. Wait, say that one more time. People should be telling you what they should be confirming what God's already told you. Okay. So like in your private prayer time, your prayer closet or whatever, there are things that God's telling you, revealing to you. Yeah. People should be, if they're in tune with the spirit, should be coming along, confirming what he's already told you. But not trying to tell you something that they want to see you doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Copy. That's that's not that's that's them. Right. That's I do believe that there are 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 people, you know, one of the gifts of the spirit is like word of wisdom. So that does deal with the future. But it should still be kind of based around something God's told you yeah. or right. hinted at. Right. Right. Showing you maybe a, a picture of or, or giving you a little mm -hmm. preview of, a little taste of. Like this is coming, this is coming into your life. Down the line, right. and then here comes somebody, kind of confirming, right. maybe well, even maybe said. even expounding a little bit more on that future thing. But we're not supposed to be guided by everybody else's opinions and feelings about right. what we should be doing with our lives. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, I felt that. So yeah. we've been talking about mental health, and you said that you went to therapy. Um, how could we notice something in our friend? Like, what are some symptoms mm -hmm. we can see in our fellow brothers and sisters? Um, so, oh, oh, no, you see how he reacted to that? No, that's because of this and that. Let me go and talk to them about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. You just use the word. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you just use the word. This is this is a key word. React. Are they reacting or are they responding? Mm -hmm. Reactors heat up, blow up. They they make a decision before giving thought to it. Mm -hmm. Responders are are more disciplined with what comes out of their mouth and what they do with their bodies, their body language, or what they do with their hands. Mm -hmm. So, again, the re when I was telling you all about the the ICD, the impulse mm -hmm. compulsion disorder. Right. Again, that's just a label that the world has come up with. Right. You know, it is a real thing. Again, I don't take ownership right. of that. But when it comes to ICD, reacting is what magnifies it. Mm -hmm. Instead of breathing, calming down, being <laughs> still for a second, and then responding. So are you dealing with somebody who is always reacting? Or someone who is always in denial? Always in denial. Um, and then there are those that, that there are ways people can put up like a wall, right? This is their defense. So do they make everything about themselves? Mm. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Like like you're talking about your calling to them and somehow they turn the conversation around to make it about them. Oh, Lord. Mm -mm. You, you, you're talking about basketball, right? about what you'd like to pursue in basketball. In some magical way, they turn that conversation into something about them. Sometimes, somehow they make themselves... The main character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These are signs that there's something happening internally. And someone who may be just, you just extra out with everything, just mm -hmm. over the top with everything. Okay. How about, how about, <laughs> yeah, I mean, things like this will let you know, you may not know what it is, but something's going on. And now, how do you, how do you bring up therapy to that person? That it's difficult. That might be a challenge. It helps if you've gone through it, right? So, see, I have experience with it. I have experience being in denial. I have experience taking ownership of something. So, I don't have a problem telling anybody. You, you, 
you might want to you might want to go see a counselor about that. Like I know, <laughs> I know, I know deflectors. That's the word I was looking for. They deflect all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's something something's brewing on the inside, and, and they don't mm-hmm. want to address it. Wow. Mm-hmm. Somebody who can't, you know, anybody who they they can't trust anybody. Just don't trust anybody. They 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 walk into the room <laughs> thinking <laughs> they walk into the room and they feel like everybody's against them already. They don't. Somebody has an agenda. Always has an agenda. That's their mindset. These are folks that need therapy. Listen, everybody needs to go to go go see a therapist. Right. Therapists have yeah. therapists. Mm. Wow, that's You're crazy. really speaking right <laughs> oh, yeah, on, on topic. Point. Oh, <laughs> that's that's just real. Because oh, because again. The majority of us, do we all get our checkups? Do we all go to the dentist? Right. Right. Do we all, I mean, like, these are the things we're supposed to do, right, for the maintenance of our bodies. We're supposed to see the optometrist for our eyes. Right. We're supposed to go to the dentist for our teeth. We're supposed to go to the internist. That's our regular doctor that does our regular checkup. Right. We're supposed to do these things right. all the time, whether it's every six months, whether it's once a year, right? Then at a certain point as we get older, ladies need to have their mammograms. Men need to get their prostate mm-hmm. checked. I mean, these are the kinds of things that we that we have to do as we well, okay. Again, what about this space up here? Man. Why are we ignoring this? Why are we not giving this any oh, attention? And so many people think that if you need therapy, you've genuinely hit like a rock bottom. And it's like for me, I can't personally say that I've hit a rock bottom, but I know I've hit some. And I'm like, I'm, I want to check it. What if? You want to make sure you don't hit rock That's bottom. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I want to make sure I don't get there. Right. Or if the enemy tries something, and then I, I, I want to make sure I don't fall for anything. Like, I want to make sure am I straight up here? Because if he catch my mind, then he got me. And it's just like, I can't let that happen. Right. What if we want therapy to be better? Like, what if, again, going back to the physical body, right. I'm all, I'm, I am in good health. now. So now I'm, I'm beginning to do things intentionally to enhance my good health right mm-hmm. i'm walking i'm running i'm hitting the gym i'm i'm doing an aerobics class etc so what if things are great right but you just want to make sure i just want to stay great i, I want to stay yeah. great i want to stay on top of things right me and Jew get in the gym we can hit 10 in a row five times 10 times we we still gonna come back the next day and keep shooting keep shooting right. Right. Keep, keep keep how, many, how, how, how many how many free throws did kobe shoot after practice, I'm, I'm sorry, not after. After the game, right, a lot, hundreds probably, <laughs> right, like like the game. He won the game. Yeah, right. shouldn't he be out celebrating? Right. right, and this dude's in the gym. You gotta make sure it's on point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what what is again? I always say, what's the point of practice? Want to get better? Whatever it is that I'm practicing, my aim is to get better. I, right. I want to get to a point to where it's just second nature. Right. right. So so That's that right. could be another reason that. One might see a therapist like I just I want to I'm going to have a little little mind check, a little mental right. health check. I just want to make sure I'm good, and maybe there's some things I can better. Maybe there's some right. things right. I can enhance. That's why I tried to meditate because I'm like, like I try to do it the like um, basically just thinking positive. I just mm-hmm. trying to make sure I'm thinking positive, just to be able to control my thoughts, like don't have any bad thoughts, even though they're still going to come in. They're going to come, but like I said, you don't have to own them. Right. right. That's what I'm saying. Like I, that's why I did that. Like. I feel like that's gonna help me with my mental health, right. keep me on point. Like. Right. So again, just just piggybacking on that, for us as believers, we should be thinking positively, but positively based on the word. So right. like, scriptures. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. okay. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. That's yeah, it. Like, I mean, even if you're just meditating on Philippians four thirty, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Just over and over man. again. Okay. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I'm I'm, med- I'm thinking about it. I'm focused intently on it, and then I'm gonna let it come out of my mouth. Man. Okay, yeah, I'm glad you said that because I didn't know what to think about. I was just like, <laughs> right, right, and see, and then that's where it could be. So, like, if you, if you, and I don't want to deviate into like other religions and stuff, but like, like in Buddhism and Hinduism, meditation is a is a major Huge. component, right? Mm-hmm. But right. again, like, what are they doing? They're just opening up the mind to other stuff. whatever they believe, whatever, whatever they believe, right? And right. then imagine if you don't really have a belief system, right. and you're opening up your mind to whatever. So. What, That's dangerous. What might walk like in? It's deeper than. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, I have another question. Um, so, how have you been able to, like, because you can't talk to your therapist all the time. Mm-mm. You know, you have a family. 
So how have you been able to, like, let your guard down and be vulnerable and, like, just let mm. them know what's going on? Because Man. it was my it was my mom's birthday party. Leani, you know Leani? Mm -hmm. Leani came up to me. She was like, you, you all right? Because I wasn't all right because my coach wasn't playing me. So I'm not playing. Basketball was not going my way. Some other stuff was going on. And I was like, yeah, I'm good. She was like, you wouldn't tell me even if you wasn't doing good. I said, no, I wouldn't. Because I don't want them to worry. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, it's, and like, I'm one of the strong black men in the family. So, I, you know, like, right. I, don't want the, I don't want them to see me weak or anything like that. I'm, I'm supposed to be the shoulder that they right. lean on. You feel me? So I don't want to, I'm not going to ask for their shoulder. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? But how have you been able to... You might need their shoulder, though. That, right. right. Mm -hmm. And I like I liked how you opened up the question. You used a very powerful word. You said vulnerable. Because that's why I don't like to be vulnerable. Right. Man, me either. Yeah. And, for, and for, I mean, humans as a whole may not be prone to it, but men especially. Like, we, can, we can't show ourselves to We're be not. vulnerable. Can't like, be weak at all. <laughs> and, and automatically, it's associated with weakness. But... Yeah. There's a difference between having a weakness or dealing with the weakness and then just flat out being weak. Mm. Like recognizing a weakness is a strength. It's a strength. Um, I gotta go. I gotta go nerd on y'all for a second. Y'all, right. uh, y'all know I'm. I'm y'all know I'm the, I'm the superhero guy. All right. Okay. All right. So one of my favorite superheroes is the Green Lantern. Here's why. First off, because his power is based on his will. All right. So how strong mm -hmm. is your will? The stronger the will, the stronger you are. Mm. The other thing is Green Lanterns are, it's assumed that they don't have any fears, that they're not afraid of anything, but that's not true. To be a great Green Lantern is to admit your fear and then overcome your fear. Mm. And I'm going to face my fear. Mm -hmm. I'm going to face what I know I'm afraid of. Mm. Admitting weakness is how you overcome weakness. Like, whoa, I can't do this by myself. This one right here, this thing right, this issue right here, I need help. I, I can't, I can't do this one alone. I, I need, I need, I need, I need an expert. I need a, I need a village. I need, I need to talk to, I need to talk to somebody about this. So you're right. I can't, I don't have access to my therapist. For example, as much as I have access to my wife. So I can talk to my wife. Now I can talk, I can, I, you should be able to talk to your spouse about anything. Right. And I can, we can talk to each other about anything. Now there's some things, you know, every spouse is entitled to individuality, mm -hmm. right? So let's say my wife may, somebody may have confided in her about something and she, that may be something that she can't share with me. Something like that is understandable. But, like, but beyond things like that, she's right there. I got my best friend in the house with me. Mm -hmm. Right. My, 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 I need to know, like, of my siblings. Like, maybe, because every individual is unique. So in my particular situation, right, I got three siblings, I got three sisters, and I relate to all of them uniquely. And I go to each of them about certain things. Right. right. On top of that, my oldest sister has two children that while on paper are my niece and nephew, we were raised as brother and sister. Right. So I go to them about stuff that I won't go to my siblings about because they're my age. Right. right. But there is a vulnerability that I can have with each of my sisters. There's a vulnerability I can have with my mom. There's a vulnerability that I can have with my, with my, I, I can be most vulnerable with, with, well, first off, most vulnerable with God. Right. And right. then on, as far as the earth is concerned and humans are, I can be most vulnerable with, with my wife. Mm -hmm. I can go to, Alan and Adrian, my niece and nephew, who are more like my brother and sister, uh, right. and with a with a certain kind of vulnerability. Right. So, and, and therapy even helped me go to them more than I had already been going to them. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you need a support mm -hmm. system. Like any therapist yeah. will tell you that. As a matter of fact, a true therapist will tell you, my goal is to make sure you don't stay here. Mm. Mm. That's good that you said that because I once heard somebody tell me to put, because for me, if I talk to you about something that I know that I'm called to, I definitely trust you. Because I that's not something, you know, there 
first of all, you have to be crazy to accept the call of God. Let's just put that out there right now. So I must be crazy. But good, anyway, kind, good kind of crazy. Right. Good, crazy, good kind of crazy. crazy. Absolutely. I'm with it. But <laughs> when it comes down to like, I, I don't confide in everybody. I only like, I feel like that's something like a discernment type of thing. But for me, like I heard to put my friends in the categories and I feel like that's like the greatest thing ever because there are certain people I know that I could talk to about certain things. Some some people may not be able to handle something at a specific time, mm -hmm. and their response to you may just be like, like, everybody calls me T, so they just may be like, dang, T, that's crazy. And I'm like, that's not what I needed to hear at the moment. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I feel like certain people can handle certain things. It's like, just like you said, like, a lot of people expect me, like, don't know why, but like, with the whole ministry thing, like, oh, T's got it, she good. And it's like, no, I'm not. Like, I'm, right. I'm sitting here trying to overcome a lot of things behind closed doors. So it's like, honestly, knowing who you can lean on and praying about it. Like, I, I tell God, honestly, I'm like, I need you to help me. Like, there are some, I need somebody or some people that I can lean on when it comes to certain things because there are certain weaknesses that I don't, I don't call it like, my anxiety or my depression sure. it's not yeah. mine it's no it don't belong to me mm -hmm. however how can i overcome it like right. i need some tools on how to fight i have the weapons and the word how do i use them right you get what i mean yeah. so yeah putting my friends in categories my brothers and sisters in christ in categories people that i look up to in categories i feel like has genuinely helped because it shows me like okay if i'm dealing with something like mental health okay i know who i can go to who's more like I wouldn't say stronger in this, but maybe who I know that has overcome more with that. I guarantee you, if Paul the Apostle wanted to talk to one of his fellow apostles about a thing, he knew who he could go to. Right. Listen, if it was time to pop off, I need to talk to Peter. <laughs> right? Yeah. But if, it's time, if, if we're to be calm and collected, let me go see John. Let me go holler at right. John. So... That's very mature of you to even recognize that, um, and 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 I'm hearing I'm hearing ma the maturity in all of you. So, and one of the main things that I'm hearing, a common thread that I'm hearing, is your recognition of where you need help, your recognition of of what you can't do alone, what you what you can't do by yourself, mm -hmm. your recognition of of total trust and reliance on God and figures in your life that, that can aid you and help you along this journey that we do call life. So right. when, when you can recognize those things, that's, that's, that's maturity on, on your part. Thank you. All right, pastor. So we usually have four of us, but our co-host Anthony could not be here, but he sent a message for you. So let's go ahead and see what he has to say. What's up guys. Uh, my name is Anthony. I'm one of the hosts of Ignite 2.0 podcast. I'm sorry I wasn't able to be there with you guys physically, but um, this has been a great episode so far. I just want to thank Pastor Fred for coming out and spending time with us and discussing this important topic. With so much going on in the world today, from politics, family, to even your job, uh, these are some things that can wear you down mentally. And I believe us being believers in Christ, mental health, it goes hand in hand. Um, things like prayer, fasting, and even just going to church with other believers. These are some of the things that give us believers in Christ mental clarity. I also believe in having other hobbies like fishing, art, or maybe even working out. These are some other things that can provide mental clarity. I know for me personally, working out is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, for me, it sets the tone for the day and it allows me to take all of my negative energy out on the weights. Overall, I just think that everybody should involve themselves in some sort of activity that reinforces positive energy and provides you mental stability. That was fire. Uh, and, 10 out of 10. Yeah, and, yeah, and uh, I want to speak about, like, I want to go off him talking about uh, some of the hobbies. Like, um, I used to go dirt bike riding when I was younger. And now that I'm realizing, like, as I'm getting older, I want to do it more. Like, it just felt free. That's the time, like, where I went with my dad, like the boy time, like my dad, my brother, my nephews, like I just felt like that was like for me to be free and just have fun. And I feel like that helps with mental health, like because like with the world that I'm in as being a student athlete, all this stuff going on, like I need somewhere to go where I can just be relaxed and just enjoy life. Like I'm not trying I'm not 
even though I'm trying to get toward my purpose, like I have that moment to where I can just breathe, like, whew, like I'm good, yeah. like I'm chilling with family. Yeah, I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad he brought up the hobbies. I wish I would have brought it up because actually in therapy, we call them healthy behaviors. And healthy behaviors should replace whatever unhealthy behaviors you are, right. you know, engaging in, which kind of led you <laughs> in therapy in the first place. Um, let me give you one example, and I'm going to show you how this can, like, weigh on your mental. So when my dad passed, I mean, that was a blow. Mm -hmm. um, it was during the pandemic. When the pandemic hit, now, mind you, my schedule's crazy, so I don't always get to do all the things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. But the world shut down, and so I had time. So I'm a gamer. Mm -hmm. So I got on the sticks. <laughs> <laughs> when my dad passed, I got off. Like, I just got back on. He passed, I got off. That was three years ago. I haven't picked up the sticks again. Wow. So... Mm. If anything, I'm going to let what Anthony said be the fuel that gets me right back into that, uh, amongst other healthy behaviors and hobbies that uh, I haven't been able to get back to. There are some things that I am doing. You know, like for me, uh, reading and writing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like binge watching shows when I can binge. Mm. Right. Um, yeah. It's the best. <laughs> yeah. Literally. So those are just some of the examples of hobbies and, and healthy behaviors and how they can definitely contribute positively to your mental health. I want to add to what you just said. It's so funny that you, that your therapist called them healthy behaviors because sometimes even in the Christian world, they could be looked at as distractions, but it's really like, that's the type, God never said we couldn't have fun. God never said we couldn't enjoy ourselves. These are things that I feel like help. Like for me, I love the beach, love it a lot. And I even, like, I would pray to God at times. I'm like, lead me somewhere, like, on the beach if I'm going down, like, Pacific Coast Highway. Like, lead me somewhere where, like, maybe I could meet with you and, like, me and you can talk and me and you can have, like, a good time. Mm -hmm. Like, and that being by the water for me gives me probably the utmost amount of peace because I'm away from the noise. And it's, like, it's really peaceful. So I feel like just replacing whatever bad habits like you said, that got you into therapy with good things, it, it can take you a long way because they they are good things. Like you gaming is a good thing if it helps you to to just feel more at peace or just, you know, wind down. Life is not all about like work, 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 business. You got to be here and you got to do this. Like, no, because you got to show up for yourself at the end of the day. First. Indeed. Right. That's real talk. I agree. Man, yeah. we can talk about this all day. Right. <laughs> But we've had a great episode. We've had the illustrious Dr. <laughs> Price. Got some bombs, got some gems on us. Man. All the gems. And I learned a lot. Me personally, um, you said something about denial. Um, at the beginning of the vodcast, I was literally in denial, talking about how I wasn't depressed about uh, this person dying or that person dying. I said I was just sad, right. but I was depressed. So. First of all, thank you for that. For that was Not that, a that's important. But um, I, that's I learned a lot, and I hope you guys learned something. A I for lot. sure learned something. Got a list of things. I for sure learned something. Thank you, Fasha. And Man, it felt like the mental, you. like a little therapy, like we were saying. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, when, once you go through so much therapy, you you know you you have to fight feeling like you're now a therapist. So <laughs> I got to remind myself. I, I, you're not a therapist. <laughs> I just got a therapy. Right. right. Yeah. But I was honored to be here. And whenever y'all want to do this again, let's do it. Yeah. Sure. Down. Well, I just want to thank you for being our guest for Ignite 2.0. Yo, we really learned so much. And Man. we hope the viewers learned a lot too. Man, Man you, you really know what you're doing with this one. And I feel like, just like you mentioned Paul saying in his word, we all have not arrived yet. But I feel like, you just acknowledging what you've overcome and what you've gone through, you've been able to help us. And this is something that people don't talk about. And with young adults in general, we are the future. So it's so important that you are able to come here and just to just drop gems and instill stuff in us. This is this is what this is all about. So yeah, we yeah, appreciate you. Absolutely. Once again, I'm honored. I'll just say this last thing. You just said something. You all are the future. I remember I used to hear that all the time. Yeah. But I'm the present. Mm -hmm. right. You all are no doubt the future. Right. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Right Thank you. Another J. <laughs> 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 right, stop. Boom, boom, boom.
This show is fire. If you want to be a part of our show to express your comments, share your experience, or just submit questions, go to the link on the screen or scan the QR code. All right, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. See you, see you.